Hi there, my name is Brennan Caverhill and I'm going to take you through my photo workflow. I've just gone out and photographed some exterior shots for Moksha Yoga. I got home, I plugged my Nikon D700 into my laptop with a USB cable and you can see here that the D700 is connected and powered on. I'm going to launch Lightroom 5 and first off we have to import the photos from the camera to my hard drive and into Lightroom simultaneously. So here's my Lightroom workspace. Over on the left you'll see I can click import and it brings up a new workspace, a new dialog. It's very intuitively set up. You can see the thumbnails of the photos that are sitting on my camera, the D700 device, as you can see over here. The source is from where are you going to collect the photos to put into Lightroom. So the source can be either a camera, in this case it's a D700. It could be another device that is attached to the computer, or an external hard drive or the internal hard drive. But today I'm going to take in pictures from the D700, so from the D700. Next, you'll see the little arrow. You have to decide, do I want to copy these photos as a DNG? That is an Adobe Digital Negative. Do I want to copy the photos from my memory card to the computer while leaving them on the memory card? Move the photos, which means I'd actually extract them from the memory card and they wouldn't be there anymore or simply add the photos, which means I leave the photos at their source and I just add them to Lightroom. As you probably already know, Lightroom doesn't actually store your photos. It just makes reference to where they are stored. So if I used add, then, uh, then I would have to leave the photos on the memory card. And I see Stacy's just saying that she's ready to have a chat, so I'll check in with her in 10 minutes. So from the D700, I'm going to copy the photos and leave them on the memory card. And two, right now it's saying that they're going to my internal hard drive, my C drive. But what I want to do is down here in destination is choose a different destination. Because I don't want the pictures to go to my pictures, which is the default as a rule. I want to choose, there it is, my external backup and pick the location of photos, Nikon D700, 2013. So that's where I want the photos to go. I'm going to remove the 2013 folder and just select uh, the day folder. I wonder if I can do that. Maybe I'll just click here. There we go. When I click on the Nikon D700, it wants to put the photos under 2013, and then down here at the end, under 2013-09-05 and you can see there are going to be 21 photos that are going in there. So that is the destination, the destination of the photographs. Where are they going to be moved to or copied to in this case? So I'll downsize destination, I'm done with that. Apply during import, I do want to apply some keywords. I'm going to go for Moksha Yoga, maybe Let's see, Toronto, Ontario, evening, uh, what else, blue sky, slow shutter, um, building, it's probably good for now. Oh, maybe St. Clair, because it's the Moksha Yoga St. Clair. So that's what I'm going to apply during import, just these keywords. So I'm done with that. I do want to rename the files. Uh, I don't want to leave them as the img underscore random number. So I'm going to go ahead and click custom settings and edit the custom rename. I'll go in here and delete that previous And since today is in the year 2013, the month of September and the 5th, I think I want my files to rename like that. Yeah, and there's a good example, 2013-09-05. And I like to go year, month, day, so they're always in chronological order. And 57. I don't want that start number is 57, so I'm going to change that to 0. 0, 0. Just two zeros, maybe is all I need. So that's what I'm going to rename the files as. 
and then file handling. Don't import suspected duplicates, that's fine. Building smart previews allows you to still work with the photographs even if your device that stores the photos, for example an external hard drive, isn't connected to the computer. I don't need that because I always have my external hard drive with me. And for now I'm not going to make a second copy or a backup copy. So I've taken care of everything. I've got a source. I'm going to copy the photos to my hard drive and I'll add some keywords and do some renaming. Then I click import and here come the files. You can see the progress of the import in the top left hand corner when this light gray bar has filled the entire frame then all of the photos have been imported. I had I think 31 raw files that I just took and they're on their way in now. We can see two thumbnails sitting there. Now there are five so we're about 20 percent of the way through. Of course before I started this part of the digital workflow First, I had a plan. I did some pre-visualization of the photos that I wanted to make. I was requested to take some exterior photos of this yoga studio. I decided to do it in the evening because I was looking for that nice rich blue sky, which you'll see in some of the later photos. And I wanted the slow shutter speeds so that I could blur these streetcars as they drove by. People are always really impressed by those blurred streetcars, so I figured I'd take advantage of it. And here's the rich blue sky that people often like. Rather than shooting in the middle of the day and just having, you know, regular white blown out skies, I tend to go for evening shots. So they're almost all the way in. I did my pre-visualization. I had some ideas that I wanted to photograph. I went out and I made the photos. Came home, plugged in the camera. I'm now importing, importing the pictures. They're almost in. Once I'm done, I have to go through a quick edit and star the photos or flag that are worth working with. You can hear the little ding that indicates that all the photos are in now. And I can start to take a look. This one is not that great. Uh, pretty boring, a little bit of a soft focus. So I'm going to switch into the develop mode and actually give this one a nix. So I'm going to give it the reject flag. I could just click X or I could click the reject and you can see that it grays out the thumbnail showing that you're not going to keep it. Uh, this one's kind of mediocre too, but I'm going to keep it because it might be the only shot that shows the studio. It's still pretty sharp, uh, nice and clear. So that I can work with. I'll leave it. This one's starting to get cool. One of the streetcars streaked by, and I'm going to give it a three star and do a little work with it right off the bat. What the heck? First, I'll straighten it out. And I might even apply in the develop module the auto straightening. Lens correction, basic, upright, auto. Watch what happens. Doop. Sort of straightens it out for you. And I'm going to crop it, get rid of some of the excess that I don't need, just the studio I'll have hanging in there. And that looks better. Hmm, maybe I'll undo that last crop. There we go, that last straighten, that's better. Give it a little contrast. I might drape down an exposure curtain, see if I can get some blue back into the sky. Doesn't look like there's a lot there. So I'll forget about that. And uh, that's okay. Mediocre. Three stars. Uh, I like this light, but nothing great there. I'm going to can that. That's a little cooler, but it kind of blocks part of the word yoga here. So I'll can it. And I'll keep this one just in case. Then I switch to a different angle. Let's see what we've got here. And that's kind of neat how the cars are streaking at the bottom. No good. Canning it. And then this one. I think that's my favorite. Nice and sharp. 
I like the trees. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Crop a little closer. Even get it in a little closer. We don't need much of that brick building. There we go. Let's see if I can recover anything from the sky. Turn the highlights down. Ah, uh, not worth it. I'll leave it white. That's fine. Contrast a little. Oh yeah, look at that pop. And then a little clarity, a little vibrance, and then got a pretty nice photo. That's a winner. Let's see what else I got. Hmm, that was just a practice shot. Can it? Uh, I'm starting to get there. That's nice. I like how those cars have those glowing lights with the starburst pattern that comes from a small f-stop. What else have I got here? Ooh, that's cool, but you can't really see the yoga studio. Oh, I can a little bit. I'll hang on to it. There we go. That's a neat one, too. I like how you can see the end of the streetcar and it kind of covers up all this stuff. What do we got here? Also cool, but not in focus. Dang. That one's better. Here's where I'm getting the rich blue sky I was talking about. Do I want to leave that light in? It's kind of nice. I'll just leave it kind of lingering at the edge. Let's see what happens if I brighten it up. Give it a little contrast. Moksha yoga, hot yoga. Looks good. Still a little busy over here. So I'm going to clamp down in. I think I'll also get rid of that Pattison. I don't want that to be there, so let's see if I go like that. Nah, that's fine. No big deal. Moksha Yoga, nice and straight. I might even lean it forwards a little bit. I'm going to go down to Lens Corrections, go to Manual, and do a vertical tilt. I kind of straighten the building out a little bit. Give it a three star. Scroll up. Gave it some contrast. How about a little clarity and a little vibrance? Makes it pop. And the rest, it just kind of got dark. Too bad because it kind of had a neat angle there. What about this one? Oh, the lights are still on. Mm, too much. Okay, so let's export these two for now. I'm going to grab this one. This one. Oh, and I've got three. Sweet. So if I want to hold on to all those, I just hit the control button while I click, click through and grab all three. Then I'll go file, export, and I'm going to email these to a client. So let's put them in the subfolder, Moksha Exterior. Just going to put them on the desktop. That's fine for now because I'm just going to email them and delete them. No need to rename. I'll keep the file size limited to 300k for easy emailing and resize it to 2000 pixels wide on the long edge because it fills the screen well and looks sharp. And click export. You can see the progress for the export in the top left. One, two, So all three photos are now exported. Here's the folder. Let's take a look at how they look. Eh, kind of cool. A little better. Nice and sharp. Mm, no, that's only okay. I might only send the client these two. I'll send her all three. Good and next. I can take it. So now I boot up the email, I boot up a compose, and I send it off to the client. So I'm going to have a Moksha Yoga. There are the three files. Bum, bum, bum. Popping into my email. Let's see what it looks like when I pop that out. Uh, I'll pop that back in. 
So hopefully the photos let's give them a little space. Hopefully they'll look okay. View exterior shots to get started. There we go. That's all for now. Thanks.